Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Millennial in the Middle. I'm Connor DeLynn. This is episode 19. Kind of exciting. Uh, Less than two months. We've already put out 19 episodes, and I've got some really exciting plans for episode 20. We're going to kind of do a recap of the Millennial in the Middle concept and what I've learned so far. So you don't want to miss that one. With that said, you don't want to miss today's episode either. Uh, This episode is an interview that I'm about to share with you with Emily Northway. And here's the story behind Emily. Uh, I actually, to be honest, have not seen Emily in 10 plus years. She lived in Utah for just one year or two years during her junior and senior year of high school when we met. I have not seen her since. Emily graduated college and decided, I'm going to go moved to Norway for some international work experience. She thought she'd be there for a year and ended up being there for six plus years now, is still there really with no plans of coming home anytime soon. And I think it's pretty cool because you all have heard people say, or maybe you've said it yourself, oh, I'd love to go live overseas or go live out of the country for a while and have that experience. But let's be honest, no one ever does. It takes a lot of guts, a lot of courage to do that, and a lot of trust in yourself, being able to figure it out along the way. And that's exactly what she has done. She headed to Norway without speaking Norwegian. She uh, al- she signed up for some classes. Norwegian speaking early on is now fluent in Norwegian, has worked for a few different companies over there, and really has found success. But more importantly, we're going to talk about some of the differences between life in Norway, life in America. I think it's an interesting perspective with her being an American there. And then we talk about some of the differences between Norwegian politics and American politics, and more importantly, how Norway views America and what we're going through right now. Her answers Uh, are pretty entertaining. They're pretty interesting. Uh, She talks about when Donald Trump got elected in 2016 and how her friends were basically giving her, giving them their condolences for, you know, I'm so sorry of what's happening to your country. And it sounds like your America is going to become extinct the way we know it starting tomorrow. Right. And so it's kind of funny to hear some of her perspectives on Donald Trump, Barack Obama, and really what we're going through as a nation right now and our way through that. So an interesting perspective, a fun interview. Uh, We do this. It's her Friday night. She's sipping on a glass of wine and just enjoying a fun interview. So enjoy. Thanks for listening. As always, be ready for episode 20 coming up next. Here we go. Emily Northway, this is pretty cool. This is our first international episode here. Yeah, Millennial in the Middle is going overseas, and we're checking it. It's Friday night. You're already in weekend mode there in Norway. I'm in the middle of the day here, and uh, we're excited to have this interview tonight. So thanks so much for coming on. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited as well. Oh, good. Well, tell my listeners a little bit about you, kind of your background of where you grew up and you know how you got to where you are now. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, my name is Emily Northway. And oddly enough, I am living in Norway. Uh, (laughs) I think (laughs) it's destiny. But no, I grew up in Wisconsin. I studied in Salt Lake City, Utah. I got my degree from Westminster College and moved to Oslo, Norway soon after I graduated and plan on staying for one, two years max. And it's been six years now. So, Oops. (laughs) Oops. <laughs> I, Every I year that passes, that. my parents call and ask, when are you coming home? <laughs> <laughs> I've asked that. I know, you know, we have it. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, a little background. I knew Emily in high school, like our senior year. And I remember, like, I have not seen you in 10 years. We were just saying that class of 2010, gotta love it. Yeah. And, yeah. And I remember like a year ago on Instagram, you like, oh, when are you coming back? And you're, oh, I'll be back in a month or two. That was like 15 <laughs> months ago. That's when I jumped into the startup world. I went to an event at a startup community and it was uh, reverse pitching to join a startup. Uh-huh. So I reverse pitched myself. I made up a rap and jumped into the startup world. So yeah, this kind of kept me here. That's awesome. Well, I, I actually, I, I have a lot of respect because I think a lot oh, of people would you. say 
like, oh, I'd love to live out of the country. I'd love to do this. No one ever does, right? Yeah, and true. I think for you to actually go out there and then stay, to work through it, really to start fresh, I'm so excited to kind of have this conversation and hear about your experiences. So let's start with kind of that first question of what made you decide after college, you graduate, that I'm not only going to move out of my <laughs> home state, I'm going to move to Norway. Yeah, so that's kind of my attitude about life. It's always been go big or go home or just super adventurous, curious, uh, wide-eyed sense of wonder sort of feeling. Uh, yeah. I had visited Norway once uh, during college and just thought it was amazing. I traveled throughout the country. I took a few trips throughout Europe, um, but Norway really stood out to me. And so it was a very natural, like, duh moment. My family had just moved from Utah to back to Wisconsin and then to Houston, and none of those places really appealed to me. Yeah. So the day I graduated from college, I bought a one-way ticket and have been here since. <laughs> the thought of a one-way ticket gives me so much anxiety. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, but this is the thing. Anything that scares you but also excites you, that combination, chase that for life. Like a 50-50 mix of like terrifying but exciting, it's yeah. the best. Oh, I, I think that's so great. Like I, and that's what's been cool for me on this podcast too, to have people with different backgrounds, different experiences, yeah. because I, I struggle relating to just being like, what's the plan? I don't know. We'll figure it out there. <laughs> So, so you show up in Norway. I'm not type A. <laughs> Did you speak Norwegian? Like, what was that like? No, I didn't speak Norwegian. But I, right when I got here, I signed up for a course and, and I just picked it up. I asked my Norwegian friends, like, can we speak Norwegian? Like, can we speak Norwegian? Like, but it's not a to my just speak Norwegian to me because a lot of people, especially our generation, they speak English. Yeah. They love American culture. They grew up listening to American music, watching American TV shows and movies. So they love any chance they get to speak English. Uh, so I'll go to the store when I first moved here and I would say something in kind of a broken accent, like, uh, like, where is the watermelon? And they could tell that I wasn't from Norway. So they yeah. would say, oh, yes, the watermelon is aisle two. <laughs> Why not? No, like, speak Norwegian. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's so funny. Like, they were more excited to speak English of having an American there. Yeah, but they love, I mean, like, most countries, they love when people try to learn their language because it's such a small country. Um, it's not a very useful international language in that sense. Sure. But... Yeah. So what was that first, I mean, tell me just like the first few months you're there. What was that like? That's a really good question. I moved here in the summer and I did not know that the country basically shuts down for two months, mostly all of like half of June, all of July, everything's yeah. closed. It's summer vacation. All of the kids are out. Parents are out like they have a thing called Fiel as uh, like, like group holiday. So everyone goes on vacation at the same time. So that's when I moved here and started applying for jobs, but I wasn't hearing back from anyone, obviously, because they were all on holiday. So, Wait, so you didn't have a job when you went out there? No, I moved here with oh, I no thought you job. Did. No, <laughs> I really went for it. <laughs> I call it naive, call it like adventurous. I don't know, but yeah. it worked out somehow. So uh, I had I moved here on a visitor's visa. So like most of Europe, you have three months uh -huh. visitor's visa. And I used three months looking for a job. Nothing panned out. I was doing some odds and ends here and there, like just working, um, you know, doing some design work, some creating some websites. Uh, but I needed a skilled visa, like a skilled worker visa to stay. Yeah. So I started applying for a job. I mean, I must have applied for a 75 jobs like minimum yeah. and a big thing was that I was not from here so that narrative has changed a lot since I've moved uh, they're way more open to hiring internationals but it was really tough when I moved here to kind of convince people that I was serious about living here and working here yeah that it wasn't just oh you were going to be here for the summer and then you were going to head yeah. back home Exactly. Because I think that's what happens to a lot of internationals here. It's, it's a hard country to integrate to. They're very, um, 
they love Norway and they like things the way they know that they are and yeah. like that they're stable and uh, a bit more, not so uh, open, I guess. I, but I, if you force that, your way in, then you're in. <laughs> you know, it's funny because we did an episode early on in the podcast about immigration, right? And yeah, I listened to that. Things. That was really oh, good. good. And we, I actually had someone reach out and said, you need to do some, you need to do an interview with an emigrant. And I, I don't even think most people know the difference of those two, but here's how we're going to remember it. You are Emily, the emigrant, right? With yes. an E. Yes. That has become you. <laughs> Have you, you used that phrase trademark before? Trademark that. Hmm? Hey, I'm good at coming up with catchy phrases like that. This is millennial <laughs> in the middle. It. Millennial yes, in the middle with really Emily, true. the emigrant. Here you emigrant. are. So what Don't other forget experiences, it. what other experiences early on kind of made you feel like, did you question this move or did you just know like, this is right? I knew it was right. I'm a really big believer in following my, my gut instinct and what, you know, when I visited here, it was just, it's kind of like, not to sound woo woo, but an energy or a vibe or just like, you know, you feel it. You feel like this, this yeah. could be a really good spot for me where I'm at in life right now and what I want to experience. Um, but that goes with saying that there were some tough times. Um, you don't realize it really when you're in it. But now looking back when I first moved here, oh my gosh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I was extremely naive to the fact that I was without a job for four months and just yeah. like, pushing on forward and, you know, not being able to really connect with people at first or not having a community or friends. Uh, but that was a second job in itself, you know, like really digging your heels in and putting in an effort to make friends and find things uh, going on that you can just jump into head first and hope for the best. Yeah. So how did, how did the people treat you? Obviously, you're, you know, affable, you're outgoing, you're a cute young girl heading to Norway, this American girl, right? Yeah. Like, what was mm. that like? Yes, so <laughs> that's a really good question. I mean, six years ago when I first moved here, I was kind of, I felt honestly after a while that I was kind of like the, um, the fun like sidekick, like, oh, let's bring the American. She's fun. She's entertaining. She can talk to yeah. anyone. But then after I kind of earned my, my, like d paid my dues, whatever you want to call it. Um, people realize like, okay, you've been here for four years. You've been here for five years. Like you, you mean business, like, okay, you're going to, you're going to stay like, let's form yeah. like a deeper friendship. Um, so people are always very nice. They're never like mean or negative here. They're very kind, but they don't, they don't take you seriously unless you have, uh, you know, a, a connection here. Like you've been here for a long time. You work at a big company. I remember when I said I work for Visma. That's a huge IT company, the biggest in Scandinavia. People are like, oh, yeah, great. Okay, we like you. Like that vouched for me. Yeah. Um, or, oh, I know I, you know, I have some friends from this company or, you know, I've, I've worked with this uh, brand before. Then that's kind of that goes a long way for some reason here yeah but are there norwegians are uh, with... there go, go ahead no you go <laughs> I, I was gonna say were there other americans to make friends with too or were you just had they like yeah. never even heard of this before <laughs> That's a good question. so when i first moved here i was like oh my gosh i'm the first american ever to move to norway <laughs> no there are so many americans here i really? made some fantastic friends um my first few years here, I hung out with a lot of Americans. Um, but, you know, naturally, you just kind of find that uh, maybe the only thing you have in common is the fact that you're from the U.S. Mm -hmm. So uh, it took, yeah, it took a lot of effort to find some, like, some people who I had more things in common with interests outside of our nationalities. Yeah. So first impressions of what was different living in Norway mm -hmm. and the U.S., what stood out to you most? Oof. I think the thing that stood out the most was I love how like life is a bit slower here. We still live in a city, but it's, you know, 700,000 people in Oslo. So mm -hmm. it's not that many. And the country as a whole is like what it's five and a half million. That's like 
that's almost the population of Minnesota. It's so small. Uh, And so being able to feel like I can make a difference here uh, and go to a huge international company here and meet the CEO and talk to them. I mean, the opportunities, I would say, has been such a fantastic experience uh, that I don't think I would have gotten in the U.S. straight away without, you know, working my way up in a different sort of way. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Just a slower pace of life. I mean, you talk about two months, everyone just takes off for the summer. Like, why don't we do that here? Seriously, that is one of my favorite things about living here. I have considered moving, but I'm like, okay, I will not get the five weeks paid vacation, (laughs) which I love so much. And I've even, I've taken those five weeks and then I've taken more like unpaid holiday just because the work-life balance is not, taboo here it's like yeah like live your life like work hard play hard if you get what yeah. like what you need to get done then just take a month off oh man that, that's like that's so foreign really for americans uh, right? that idea right right straight out of the bat like it's the law here to get you know five weeks paid holiday and then um Actually, the first job I had at the large IT company, it was a maternity leave cover. So they do nine to 12 months paid maternity leave here. Um, and then the men, like the dads, they get, I think it's three months paid or something. Two or yeah. three. But um, so I covered her maternity leave and then was asked to stay on. But just the fact that it's family is really valued here. And I, I, I think that the values in general of the country kind of align with mine, with the, the nature and the aspect, like there's my, so many of my friends have little cabins by the sea, cabins in the forest. We go to the sea in the summer, the forest in the winter for skiing. I mean, yeah. it's just, we sit at the dinner table for four hours sometimes just, you know, eating and enjoying company and there's no rush. It's like, let's just, you know, get home, take a deep breath, light some candles, listen to some music. It's just, it's very calming to live here. Now, I'm sure you have a lot of people ask you, kind of the the grass is always greener type mentality, right? Of Norwegians coming to you saying, I want to go to America. I want to, I want to do that. What do you, what do you tell them when they say that to you? It really depends on what their goals are. So many Norwegians love to study in the U.S. They want to go and get the college experience that they saw in the movies <laughs> and then move back to Oslo for, you know, their career. Sure. But uh, I say go for it because the U.S. is so much fun. You can, I mean, it's kind of, you can't compare Norway to the U.S. It's, the U.S. is huge. Like, it's kind of like Europe, Norway is like Europe with all the different states. They're like the different European countries because you can experience so many different cultures uh, in one country. It's, it's a really special thing. Uh, so I tell my friends and people who want to move to the U.S. to road trip. Go on a road trip, visit different states, and see what vibes well with you. A lot of the Norwegians love California and New York, the coast. So that's usually yeah. where they, they go. Yeah. Yeah, I used to always laugh. I've, I've traveled out of the country quite a bit. And as I, I would always talk to all, in Australia, they all had, took these like three week trips to the US. And I'd be like, yeah. oh, where did you go? And then they would say, <laughs> I went to San Francisco, LA, Vegas, Miami, and New York. And I would think about it and I'm like, 100%. if your experience of America are those five cities, you've got to think this place is just the most epic city never sleeps, oh, like yeah. wild yeah. experience. But and they do. Utah's a lot different than that. Yeah, okay, but Utah's actually in some ways similar to Norway. Really? In my opinion, yeah. In what ways? Um, in the ways that it's very, like, outdoorsy. Uh, the nature yeah. is so diverse and beautiful. And people really value, like, they're very active here. People are biking to work, like, all of the time. They have a little road that goes along the sea and they call it the tour de finance so like all of the business people are you know like biking to work every day with their like full-on gear Uh, it's I mean cross-country skiing is like in their blood they joke that Norwegians were born with skis on their feet Um, and then I think in the way that like families are valued is 
kind of similar to to Utah. It's the uh, family time is like a very high priority, and I think I don't know. My experience in Utah was that education was also very valued, and it is valued here too. Education is free here; like college doesn't cost anything. Yeah. I, I love you. That makes the segue kind of in what I wanted to talk next of what you just said there, because I wanted to talk about values, right? Like mm-hmm. we can talk, we can talk the practices of universal health care, universal education and things like that. But I would rather focus on more the philosophy and the values. And so you, you mentioned like valuing education, valuing family. What differences or similarities did you see in a lot of those core values here in Norway? Differences in values. Yeah, so kind of touched on earlier, but like work-life balance. Like work is, like you don't live to work. You, you, I mean, Norwegians love their holidays. There's a saying called Sursiden, which means uh, sun, sunny side. So there are, Probably, sometimes it feels like there are 10 months of winter here. So when summertime finally rolls around, everyone flies to the south. They go where they are guaranteed sunshine. So Spain, Portugal, uh, you know, Africa. And I, at first I was like, you guys are crazy. This country is beautiful. Travel this country. But I get it now. Um, So I would say enjoying life in general Uh, and not not stressing like not feeling like you're too bothered about anything in general Norwegians are very relaxed happy uh like probably the the culture that enjoys and enjoying life the most (laughs) that I've experienced yeah that's cool you mentioned to me as we were kind of prepping for this interview beforehand you said that Norwegians look at freedom differently than Americans like that fundamental value what what do you mean by that yeah so I think that freedom to Norwegians it means that they can they're not held back so I look at the U.S. right now and some of the things going on right now in the U.S. obviously it's it's kind of sad and I've talked to some colleagues and some people um, from from Norway, obviously, and then some colleagues from the UK, and I've asked them, how do you like? How do you think of you know Norwegian values versus American values? And uh, a lot of them brought up freedom. They're like the US, they value freedom, and they think that freedom is you know the most important thing in the world. But freedom is more of a feeling than a, a kind of a right, if that makes sense. Hmm. But it's a, it's kind of a, yeah, it's a weird topic, freedom. But here in Norway, we're, I mean, also in Corona times, we're not allowed to travel as freely as we wish. But the country, we, we listen to the government in a way. So if the government mandates masks, everyone here wears masks, no questions asked. We're like, oh, the government wants us to wear masks, we will. Uh, If the government says we have to work from home, like no one's arguing or fighting or starting anything. There's a lot of trust in the institutions. So I think that that's uh, also a big difference. That's interesting. I I like that thought of freedom being a feeling because at the end of the day, you know, someone could tell you you're free, but you you still have to experience that and live it and practice it, right? By Mm -hmm. enjoying life, by, uh, you know, participating in all those things that are there. this kind of brings up what I want to talk about next. You mentioned, you know, obviously we're well, in a crazy time in the U.S. right now. We're in election year, coronavirus, Black Lives Matter. Do you, do Norwegians follow this? Do they care? Do they know about it? Oh, yeah. 110%. I feel like being an American makes me like a representative for the country. Yeah. Um, I remember when Trump was elected, the day he was elected, I went into work and dozens of people came up to me and my American colleague and some were laughing saying like, Oh my gosh, can you believe like, is this true? Like, and we almost felt like crying. We're like, we need to take the day off. This is insane because they ask us questions. What do you yeah. think? Is it true? Did this really happen? Like, yeah, like it's true. Um, we, we read the same news that you read <laughs> and, and like, they're like, Oh, your family's okay. What do they think? Is everyone safe over there? 
Um, so that's been interesting. Uh, and honestly, it kind of drove me to almost wanting to stop paying attention for a little bit and just zone yeah. out because it can, it can become a little overwhelming. Yeah. Well, and I think it's kind of interesting, especially doing this podcast. If all you did was watch Fox news or MSNBC all day, you would think the world is falling apart, oh, right? Totally. Like you would yeah. think that just there's riots in the street. And this is so <laughs> crazy. It's so extreme at all times. And that's kind of been the advice of this podcast too. I mean, I made the comment a few mm-hmm. episodes ago, whether Joe Biden or Donald Trump wins, America's not going to change all that much, right? No, but that, like, that doesn't make headlines though, right? Like the media. For sure. What sells is, you know, when they, they flip the switch. Absolutely. And so then I look at you in Norway catching that uh, kind of that next step. It's like, I'm here and feel like our country's falling apart. Yeah. I can't yeah. imagine if all I heard, you know, when the Australian fires were happening last year. As an American, all you heard about was that Australia is on fire. Apocalypse, <laughs> right? True. And I almost get that same type of vibe of what you're saying there. Of when you hear about American politics, you think that we're just falling apart. Yeah, really, though. Uh, that's what the, the consensus is. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Europe kind of, they used to, I feel like, look at the U.S. and look up to them um, for direction. And now I feel like it's, it's kind of just become a laughing matter. It's gotten to the point where some of my American friends have started saying they're from Canada. Um, really? Just because they don't want to deal with like feeling embarrassed or feeling that they have to talk about Trump all of the time yeah. or talk politics in general. Yeah. So, but that's I mean, why I think Millennium in the Middle is like amazing because so many, I think our generation, we're very level-headed and we want to find yeah. a happy medium. Uh, this is, yeah, kudos to you. Well, thank you. D- tell me, do you feel like, like, let's talk about Norwegian politics for a minute. What is that like? I mean, here's what's interesting. As an American, we know nothing about what's happening in Norway. Nothing about what's happening with Norwegian politics. Right? But, but you don't tell me a little bit about to. it. Yeah. I mean, you don't need to know. I mean, okay. So the basics of Norwegian politics is um, it's, we have a king, first of all. So there's a monarchy, which is quite cool. So there is a King Harold. He, oh my gosh, I don't know how old he is. He must be in his late 80s, 90s. Um, and the royal family, they're more for just showing face, showing up and doing sure. humanitarian work. They don't make any like legislation or rules. They don't have to hold any power there. But the politics here, it's, um, it's so much more relaxed and in the middle as millennial in the middle, like yeah. it, people aren't aren't voting Republican or Democrat. There is a right and a left, but it's different. It's uh, it's not as black and white. Uh, and it's so much more down to earth. It's, uh, it's It just feels closer to home. And if you want to talk to the prime minister, send her an email and she will respond to you. Yeah. Um, they, they joke a lot and they have fun with what they're doing. They don't take it yeah. too seriously. Uh, I mean, the Prime Minister, Arna Solberg, she has been doing all of these fun social media things to stay young and hip. And half the time it's just ridiculous, but it's also like they're, they're trying to speak to every generation yeah. um, and connect with us, but in a genuine way. It's not propaganda. It's not lies. It's, it's just, uh, yeah, it feels more raw and unnatural. Yeah. And I would think the the next argument, still, we look at everything from this American sense of politics. And because we're so divided, I think most conservatives, especially conservatives listening to this podcast or the ones on the extreme, would say, Mm -hmm. oh, Europe is just so liberal, right? Like, Europe is so (laughs) liberal. Bernie Sanders is trying to turn us into Norway, right? And and that's like Mm -hmm. this for the conservative side here, that's a, that's a diss, right? Like we don't want to become Sweden yeah. and Norway. What's your thought? You on can't though. The- you can't become Sweden and Norway. Like you cannot compare. I think you, uh, that's just uh, implementing the things that we have here with healthcare. And it, it, it's, 
it, you know how long that would take in the U.S. Yeah. to flip the switch from where it's at now to how it is here? Based off of what's going on now with Black Lives Matter and the riots, I just imagine if if they tried to implement yeah some of the similar similar things that we have here in Europe. I think it would be too fast of a switch. I look at the U.S. and think like the U.S. is a young country, right? Like much younger than the sure. European countries and i think maybe the u.s like grew up too fast uh and like the solid foundation wasn't as solid as we thought or uh it just, there's some some learnings that have to be done do you think that's a really interesting thought right if you compare the age of norway to the age of the u.s like the u.s yeah. is so young compared to other countries in the world but at the same time so powerful, so large, yeah, just pure exactly. numbers, size, where, where we are exactly. in the world, the economy, the global scale. There's a lot of pressure that comes with that. There is a lot of pressure that comes with that. You're right. <laughs> but it's kind of, yeah, it's gotten to the point here where people don't take the U.S. as seriously as they used to. They don't look up to the U.S. Uh, in the same way. And in terms of, like, culture, yeah, probably still. But politics and you know, international relations? Absolutely not. Yeah. Now, I know that you've met from following you on social media, Barack Obama. Uh, yeah. <laughs> was Barack Obama just like the exact opposite of Trump from a foreign mindset? Oof, yeah, 100%. People here love Obama, even if they're very conservative. <laughs> they are just obsessed. Really? My friends have photos of him in their apartments, like, uh, you know, of a young Obama smoking a cigarette or a joint. I don't know, you know, there's a famous picture. Yeah. Numerous of my friends have that in their apartments. And then uh, I think my friends here were more excited about me meeting Obama than my friends in the U.S. Yeah. Why do you think that is? What was it about Barack Obama that made him such an international figure? He's likable. Yeah. He's a storyteller. Uh, he's a family man. And I think he, he's, he has an aura about him that is way more down to earth than a lot of the former presidents. Yeah, I understand. I get that. And I mean, I think it's fair to say we already talked about there. Donald Trump is not popular on the global, in the global <laughs> scheme. But I also don't picture them having pictures of Joe Biden up in their house either, right? Mm. You know, like, yeah, so that's a, do that's they a just, safe bet. <laughs> so what do they think of like the 2016, or not 2016, the 2020 election? Oh, they are terrified. I had a colleague today ask me, uh, she said, what do you think is worse if we don't get a, a cure for Corona before May or if Trump gets reelected and everyone around the table was like oh my gosh the latter is worse obviously if trump gets reelected that's like say your goodbyes <laughs> so, well seriously what do they think is going to happen if trump gets reelected they think the world is going to fall apart they're, they're genuinely scared they are genuinely like terrified for the u.s yeah. i have people asking me like how is your family doing i mean like, are they okay? Are they, are their like day-to-day -day lives affected with the, you know, the politics going on over there? Or, like when you yeah. go visit, do you notice that life is completely different? So it's, uh, what's, I what's your answer? No, <laughs> life is not completely <laughs> different. The world is not going to fall yeah. apart. Uh, that's a little dramatic, but uh, again, it's, you know, the media spins things the way they want to and finding the common ground and like doing research and finding out what's real versus you know what is clickbait i think is you know kind of our responsibility as world citizens yeah well and i and that's hard i mean i get the question over and over as i've done this like what sources do you go to where do you try and find unbiased yeah that's actually a really situation? good question and i'll tell you it's difficult to answer because i think what we have gotten used to as a society is we listen to commentary on commentary right like True. this is what i think about what that person said thinking about what they said about trump and to me i think we start to the more that happens the further we get away from 
fact and truth and reality. Yeah. And that's True. not a left or a right problem. That is a human problem. And 100%. I think I think the only way around that is having real conversations like this. Uh, yeah, authentic. and respectful conversations where you can see the other side and you can just genuinely have like a sense of wonder and curiosity and not, not have your defenses go up straight away. Yeah. I think that's a uh, super important. Yeah. And something that's missing a lot of times. Like, frankly, I think it would be really interesting to heck, maybe we talk offline and set this up, but I'd love to like get a few of your Norwegian friends in a room and explain oh, to them like, would love that. listen, I am a very reasonable guy. I have this podcast called Millennial in the Middle. I'm commonsensical. I understand history. I voted for Donald Trump in 2016. I'll tell you why. Right? And see if we could have... They would absolutely love that. (laughs) They would. I talked to quite a few of my friends before coming on the podcast today, and I just asked for their opinions, and they're like, oh my gosh, send us the link to this podcast. This sounds phenomenal. Well, I am so excited, one, because I get to see the analytics of where the listeners are. And slowly the listeners are moving out of Utah and all of a sudden there's specs in Texas, North Carolina. Yeah. I can't wait to see a ton of Norway here in a week or so. So that's how I'm <laughs> well, let's it see this. All <laughs> that's right. Well, hey, we could chat all day long about this, but I want to just leave with this to other, let's make this specific to millennials. People okay. our age living in, you know, whether it's Utah or the U.S. for sure, that maybe have had more of a sheltered life and haven't had the experiences that you have thrown yourself into. What Mm -hmm. advice would you give to them from your last six years? Oh, that is such a tough question. It's so individual though. If I were to give everyone one piece of advice, that's a lot of pressure. But I think for those who are hungry for more or curious to learn and, uh, never feel like they have, you know, learned all they need to learn. I would say when the borders open and it's safe to travel, travel far and wide, immerse yourself in cultures. And wherever you go or wherever you end up, I mean, this can even be in your own country, your own uh, state Mm -hmm. is always look at the world with a sense of wonder. I've been in Norway for six years now, but I still walk outside of my door and like geek out at certain things. Like I'm still a tourist. And I yeah. think that has really uh, helped, helped my mindset, especially in Corona to feel that, you know, a 30 minute uh, drive outside of the city can be kind of like a, a mini trip somewhere else, but allowing yourself to yeah be playful and have a sense of wonder. I think it's a, uh, my top oh my gosh story I have a story like this is a 30 second story (laughs) you can take 60 if you need (laughs) okay wow thank you the other day on my lunch break I took a 30 minute lunch break and I was feeling a little spontaneous so I went and got a tattoo just by myself why not and that's uh, a YOLO millennial perspective right there (laughs) yeah it's very fitting but it's um it's the words I know crossed out just right here And it's kind of, it's so cliche, but it's kind of like a a different way of saying, stay foolish, stay hungry, like always stay curious. And it's like the day that you feel like you've learned everything and that you know everything is kind of like the day you die. So being able to have these conversations with an open heart and an open mind is what is going to, I think, help the world become a more compassionate place. Emily, typically I try to sum everything up and put a nice bow on it, (laughs) but I think you did it right there. And the best thing for me to do is just let that in. So (laughs) thank you so much. I love that because we've got to be more open. The minute we feel like we know all the answers is when we're headed down the wrong path. So I appreciate that so much. Hey, I didn't tell you about this, but I know you've listened to the podcast. So you know how I end these things. If you want to join yes, me. Yes, sing. Yes, okay. Yes. Chorus in Norway here. Clowns to love me. Joke is to the right. Here I am stuck in the middle with you. Can we, okay, I need to hear it and then I'll do it again with you. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll take a second take. I'm going to play the first take. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Yeah, okay, good. Clowns good. to the left me. Joke is to the right. Here I am stuck in the middle stuck with you. Stuck in the you. middle with you. <laughs> there we go. All right. Hey, thank you so much, Emily. And uh, we're going to talk thank about Thank you so this. much for having me. 
We'll talk about the follow-up with your friends. Till next time, we'll see you soon. Yes, I look forward to that. Bye.